So in this final lesson uh, in the accounts payable, uh, we're going to take a look at what we call the bank posting routine, uh, which is the process that we basically use to finalize um, our payment records uh, when we update, or excuse me, when we run the payment, uh, the bank posting, um, it in part's going to update our AP subledger as well as our general ledger. Okay. So to do the payment posting, um, again, a couple different ways um, you can accomplish this within X3. One way would be just to do the post button on the individual payment record. So that is to say I can come here to APA or Accounting Payments, then into Payment Receipt Entry. Go ahead and choose my automatic check issue, the pay. AT. Pull up my payment record here. Then I could come over here and click on the post button. Now, when you go about it in this manner, that's only going to post this one individual payment. So if you have a large batch of uh, checks that you've issued out, that probably isn't the most um, efficient way to go about it. But if you're just doing, say, maybe like a singular wire transfer, you know, just going about it on a one-off basis through this button, you know, would be fine. Okay, so that's one way to post a payment. The second way, uh, the second way kind of being the batch method of doing it, we're going to come to APA or Accounting, Payments, then we're going to come to this option right here for Bank Posting. Okay, so in here on the Bank Posting function here, we're going to come in. Now, when I run it, I always like to do so, uh, run this function on a batch by batch basis. So, you know, especially in environments, maybe you have multiple um, individuals within your organization that are posting um, accounts receivable cash batches. Other folks, maybe you have a couple different people doing AP cash batches. Um, it, it's safest, in my estimation, to always do it on a batch by batch basis. So, to that effect, you can go ahead and uncheck this all entry lots box, come over to your entry batch field, then this is going to give you a register of all the batches that have you know been loaded into the system. So in here you have your type here, this is again for the automatic check issue, then here you have your creation date, then another really nice thing about it is your uh, batch ID, it's going to include the uh, user ID of the individual who created it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Then once that's specified, um, basically these other settings are going to come through fine. Again, you're filtering on your own user account activity. Um, down here in the generation section, you're going to want to have this generate entry set. Then this accounting date right here should match the accounting date um, that was set on your payment records. So all that being in place, I can come over here and click on OK. And that in part is going to give us a log file indicating to us the payment that has been posted, as well as we can see right here is the respective journal entry identification number associated with it. So to see this, let's go ahead and close page out of here. And let's come back under our payment receipt entry. And I want to go back to that payment record to point out the, the update in the status field. So one thing you'll note here is on our payment record, once that bank posting routine has been ran, you see now here our status on the record no longer reads entered, but rather it reads in the bank, indicating to us that it's been posted now. Now if I want to see the respective journal entry associated with the transaction, I can come over to the Zoom menu, then come to Accounting Document, An accounting document will bring up this register of journal entries associated with the transaction. I can click on that. Here's the respective journal entry associated with it. So you have your financial site, your journal identification number, the uh, date of the transaction, the journal code that's associated with. Here on the header tab, you see the check number. Here on the lines tab, 
Here's uh, showing you your debit to your accounts payable account with an offsetting credit to your cash account here on line two. Okay. So that is the posting routine in the system with the respective journals. And I tell you what, before we conclude this lesson, let me also show you the um, age trial balance for the AP. So if we come to see that, if we come down under our printouts menu, we're going to come under this prints by group block. Then under financials, we're going to come to tracking of open items. Then in here, we're going to grab this option here, this NABPATB. So this is the North American Business Partner Age Trial Balance. Okay, so we're going to, on our report parameters here, we have our cutoff date that we're going to set. Here's the company, our legal company that we want to run it for. And down here on this parameter for the BP type, I'm going to flip that over from customer to supplier. And that should be all that's necessary to run the report. So we'll come in here and do a print. So after we do the print, here's the uh, PDF report for the age trial balance as it shows. So we can kind of toggle down through here. And again, this is going to give us a subtotal here uh, by supplier. You have the name of the supplier. Um, you have a listing of all the invoices and credits, the, the aging basis. Then you also have a breakout by aging bucket here. So you can see everything between what's not due to everything that's you know upwards of uh, three months past due. And over here on the last page, you have a grand total of your report, too. Okay, so that, uh, again, in that lesson, uh, we took a look at the bank posting process, how it updates, um, you know, your payment status activity, how it updates your AP sub ledger, your general ledger, and we also took a look at the agent report.